Thank you for your interest in the Remark Office OMR software. During this demonstration, you will learn how Remark Office OMR can be used to process and grade plain paper exams. Part 1 of this demonstration will focus on form design and using the template editor. In 1991, Remark Office OMR was released as an alternative to traditional OMR scanning solutions. This unique software package is designed to process plain paper forms such as exam answer sheets. It recognizes optical marks, OCR or computer printed characters, and barcodes. Handwritten text can be captured as an image, selected as a data entry field, or coded by theme. Today there are over 50,000 Remark users worldwide, including those in K-12 and higher education. You can create your own scannable forms for use with Remark Office OMR using any word processor or survey design package. This ability to create your own forms allows you to have complete flexibility over the layout and content of your forms. There are a few guidelines we recommend you follow to achieve the best results. For example, although Remark Office OMR works with almost any complete shape, experience indicates that bubbles between 10 and 14 points in height work the best. We recommend using the OMR font that installs with the software, or a capital O in the Arial font. Spacing is a key element in designing your form. You will want to allow at least 3 eighths of an inch between any text, lines, or graphics on the form and any user markable areas. This will help minimize potential errors that could be caused if your scanner skews any pages. If you have any doubts about your form, you can submit a copy to our support team for review. This is a free service which is available to everyone. It is recommended that you take advantage of this opportunity prior to printing and distributing your form. The complete list of design guidelines can be found under the support page of the Gravic website. If you follow these simple guidelines, you can expect great results. With this demonstration, I am going to show you how to process a typical form in Remark Office OMR. The form we are going to use in this demo is an exam answer sheet that was created in Microsoft Word. Let's take a closer look at this form. The first area we will review contains OMR bubbles to collect the student ID. The OMR bubbles on this form were created using the OMR font that installs with the software. You will notice that we have followed our spacing guidelines. Because we have followed the best practices, we can be assured that our scanning process will run smoothly. We will link the student ID to an external database and output additional information about each student into our dataset later on. This feature is known as Database Lookup and is convenient for pulling information from a database and inserting it into your processed form data so that it can be used when we generate reports. Jumping back to the top of our form, you will see that the teacher's name has been pre-printed on the form. Remark Office OMR can collect this information using Optical Character Recognition, or OCR. The barcode contains our subject information. For this form, we use the 3 of 9 barcode font, which also installs with the software, but Remark Office OMR can read a number of other 1D and 2D barcode types. Because this is just a font, we can highlight the area and change the font type to something that we can read. Once this has been done, we can see that this exam answer sheet is for a world history test. When we get to the answer portion of our exam, we will see that this is a 20 question test. The first 10 questions are listed in the left column, while the second 10 questions are listed on the right. While this form does not contain the exam questions, you can include this information in your forms if you wish. If we turn on the grid lines, we can see that tables were used to align the questions and answer choices. This is recommended so that everything is aligned properly. We will simply hide the table borders prior to printing to maintain our recommended spacing guidelines. Using tabs or spacing will not give you the proper layout you will need when scanning your responses. In addition to the OMR bubbles on the form, we have a short answer region available for an open-ended response. Handwriting cannot be read with the software, however Remark Office OMR can capture these areas as image clips or data entry regions. 
In this scenario, we will use the OMR bubbles in the official use only area to, to fill in a point value for the response provided for the short answer. After you've created a form, the first thing you will need to do is create a template file. Defining the form template allows you to train the software to read the various regions on your form. These regions can be OMR, OCR, barcode, or image regions. The form template conveys the location of the information on the form and the specifics of the data you require. For example, it can locate the bubbles that are filled in by a respondent. The form template also defines the format of the data to be output. A form template only needs to be created one time per form. You can then reuse the form as often as needed. To begin a new form template, select the New Form Template button. The New Form Template Properties window will open. Here you will describe your form to Remark Office OMR by entering the page description, size, and orientation. For the form template description, we will type exam answer sheet. Confirm that the page size is U.S. letter and that the orientation is portrait. The Create Page Elements window will appear next. This window directs you to either acquire an image of your form from your scanner, or acquire an image of your form from an existing image file, such as one that might be generated from a multifunction device. Each page in a form template is created using an image of the appropriate page in your form. The image allows you to see the form so that you can easily teach Remark Office OMR how to read it. We will be reading our form directly from a Remark Office OMR compatible scanner. Once the thumbnail image has been accepted, you can continue on to the template editor where we will begin to define our form. This window provides a tree view on the left and an image representation of your form on the right. The purpose behind making a form template is to tell the software where to locate the information on your specific form and how to understand your specific data requirements. The first area of the form is the teacher name, which is defined as an OCR region. OCR involves reading computer-generated text. It cannot read handwriting. In this case, the test answer sheets were printed with each teacher's name on them before they were distributed. Using OCR allows you to quickly collect each teacher's name and then use this information on subsequent grade reports. To define the OCR region, we will begin by clicking the purple toolbar button to insert an OCR region. This will change the mouse to a crosshair. To create the OCR region, place the cursor just beyond the top left of the text then press and hold the left mouse button while dragging the rectangle beyond the bottom right corner of the text, making sure you have selected the entire allotted space. For OCR areas, capture a little extra space at the end of the text to accommodate the largest amount of text you might process. In this case, teacher names will vary in length. After positioning the box, release the mouse button and the OCR region properties window appears to allow you to define the region's properties. This window allows you to provide pertinent information about the text. Type teacher in the region name box to provide a brief description of the region, which will become the name for this column in your dataset. Set the OCR type to primary. Primary OCR works well in most cases and is the default setting. The following options should be set to their default settings. Data type is textual. We are collecting student names which are textual. If we were to export our data once it is collected, the data type would be flagged as textual in the output file. When creating your own form templates, the data type you select can be textual or numeric, depending on the type of data you require. Language is none. The system's default language is used. Or orientation should be left to right, as the text on your form is oriented from left to right and all of the OCR image preprocess options should be unchecked. Mark the checkbox for region contains more than one word. This region will contain Mr. or Mrs. and then the teacher's last name, and we want to be sure to capture all of this information. When you are finished, click the OK button to return to the main template editor window. You will now see a purple box around the text in the image area, identifying it as an OCR region, and a new node in the tree view titled Teacher. 
From here, we will want to define the subject information which is provided in the barcode. Select the orange toolbar button to insert a barcode region. When the mouse changes to a crosshair, place the cursor just beyond the top left of the barcode, then press and hold the left mouse button while dragging the rectangle beyond the bottom right corner of the barcode, making sure you have selected the entire allotted space. For barcodes, capture a little extra space at the end of the barcode to accommodate the largest possible barcode you might process. After positioning the box, release the mouse button and the barcode region properties window appears, allowing you to define the region's properties. This window allows you to provide pertinent information about the barcode. Type subject in the region name box to provide a brief description of the region that will later become the name for this column in your data set. Set the barcode toe type to code 39 and confirm that the barcode orientation is listed as horizontal. These settings allow you to specify the barcode type to recognize and or positioning of the barcode on your form. Since we are collecting the subject name, set the data type to textual. Click the OK button to return to the main template editor window. The next region we have on our form is our student ID. This time we will want to select the green OMR button from the toolbar to insert an OMR region. When the mouse changes to a crosshair, press and hold the left mouse button and drag the green highlight box across all of the bubbles allotted for this section. After the box has been successfully positioned, release the mouse button and the OMR region properties window will appear. Just like with the OCR and barcode regions, we will define the information you want to collect. Type student ID in the region name box. The OMR type should be changed from multiple to grid. Grid region designation is used for questions where the output from the rows and columns represents one piece of data. The respondent typically fills in several bubbles that make up one response, such as a student ID. Since we are collecting numeric information, we will want to change the data type from textual to numeric. Defining the region layout is a key element when it comes to setting up OMR regions. In this particular situation, our OMR region is oriented in rows. We have 10 columns which represent our OMR bubble 0 through 9, and 5 rows representing our 5-digit student ID. Once that information has been entered, the software will automatically generate a number of possible label scales to choose from. We will select the label scale for 0 through 9. During the form design portion of this demonstration, I had mentioned that we would link the student ID to an external database to gather additional details about the respondents. This can be accomplished by selecting the database lookup link in the task name to the left. This feature is useful for validating names, identification numbers, zip codes, and other pertinent information. It is also useful for pulling information you have already collected out of a database, such as this Excel file, and inserting that information into your processed form data. When you set up a database lookup region, you will tell the software what field to validate and whether to replace the output with a field from the external database and or append additional fields from the external database. In this case, we will want to include the student name, school, and ethnicity. In order to set up database lookup, we must first check the box for use database lookup. Then we can select our database type from the drop-down menu. In this case, we will select Excel 2007 to 2010. When we click Browse, we can choose from any supported database file format on our system. Ours is simply named Student Database. By using the Lookup and Return portion of this window, we can choose which items we wish to include in our data set. The item we want to validate is our student ID, and we want to return the student name, school, and ethnicity for each respondent. To the right of the student name, we want to set the respondent ID to yes. Now, when we generate reports in Remark QuickStats, this information will be used to identify each respondent. Once this information has been selected, we can click OK to continue. Once similar steps have been followed to define the other regions on the form, the completed form template will look something like this. Now we can go through each region and review the properties that were defined. The first region we will open contains the OMR bubbles that are provided for each question. 
We can see that this region has been given the name of question and that the OMR type has been set as multiple. The multiple region designation is used for typical multiple choice style questions. Since our answer choices are going to be set A through E, we will define the data type as textual. As with our student ID, the region orientation is set up going across rows. There are five columns in the region referencing the A through E options and 10 rows in the region referencing questions 1 through 10. Our possible label scale is set to A through E, however this could have easily been changed if we had another scale listed on the exam. From here we can click the OK button to return to the main template editor window. Since questions 11 through 20 are set up in the same format as questions 1 through 10, we can simply copy and paste this OMR region on top of the second column of answer choices. Since Remark Office OMR cannot read handwriting automatically, we will have to set up our short answer portion of the exam a little differently. We will use the blue image region option for collecting this information. In the image region properties window, we have named this section short answer. For this demonstration, our region type has been set to image clip. This will allow us to take a snapshot of the handwriting. Later, we can run a report that will allow us to see all of the handwritten responses for this question. Another option for collecting handwriting is to set this field to data entry. This would require you to manually type in the answers provided on each exam. The image region properties window provides you with the option to select a target directory for where these images are saved. It even includes a name builder, which can also be helpful in automatically organizing your image clips. In this case, we have selected the teacher and subject regions to be included in our naming convention. This means that the image name for every short answer clip created for Mrs. Wilson will be listed as Mrs. Wilson World History. The last thing to note in this window is the checkbox to include region and read operation. It is important that this box is checked off so that your data set will include the file path for each image clip that is created. The last region we have on our form contains OMR bubbles that are listed for official use only. This section is going to be filled in by the teacher and the number provided is going to be the student's score for the short answer question. We have set the region name as subjective and like the student ID, our OMR type is going to be grid and the data type is numeric. The region orientation is set up going across rows with 10 columns in the region and two rows in the region. Because the bubbles provided are from 0 to 9, we will want to make sure that the possible label scale reflects our 0 through 9 scale. In order to set this section up as a subjective question, we will have to edit the region item properties. This item will need to be graded, and the item test type will have to be listed as subjective. The default setting is objective. Once these adjustments have been set, this area can be used to grade the short answer question on the exam. We will enter the maximum number of points allotted for this question later when we grade the exams. Before we can begin processing any completed forms, we will need to save our template file. In order to do this, we must select the File menu and Save As. We will name this file examanswersheet-completed.omr. Thank you for taking the time to watch this demonstration of the Remark Office OMR software. We hope that this video was helpful in your evaluation of the software. A free demo download is available for testing purposes. We recommend that you review all of the form design guidelines prior to printing and distributing any forms. A number of sample forms are provided for you, but if you would prefer to create your own, you can submit your design for review by our support team. Training videos for Remark Office OMR can be found on the support page of the Gravic website. The full documentation, including the user's guide for Remark Office OMR, is available to you in PDF format. Please feel free to contact the Remark support team with any questions regarding the use of Remark Office OMR. For information on licensing and pricing, please contact the Remark sales team. We welcome you to follow us on Facebook, Twitter, and YouTube so that you can receive the latest news on the Remark products. Thank you for your interest in the Remark Office OMR software.